Now, Adeleke had said that he's collating his evidence and his facts, and of course that the opposition will see him, or he will see the opposition in court. However, we have reports that sequel to that, there was a protest that happened in Abuja last week, where we had the likes of Senator Dino Melaye, Bukola Saraki, and several other people joining to protest against what happened in Oshun State. Yeah. Now, the report we have is that the police... I'm not quite happy, happy with this. The police have directed Senator Dino Milayu and Senator Ben Murray Bruce to report to the Commissioner of Police, Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, for um, concerning the investigation or concerning the matter that happened yeah. in Oshun election. So the first question we are asking is this. Do they, did they not have a right to protest? Basically, they are saying, according to them, that they caught on camera that these people were constituting um, the disturbance. Okay, I'll, I'll quote as they wrote to here. They said... Um, they were disturbing, they are being invited for investigation mm. for disturbing public peace and violently hitting policemen to forcefully enter the force headquarters in Abuja. And they said preliminary investigation carried out so far by the police into the incident revealed that Senator Dino Milai and Senator Ben Murray Bruce were captured on camera for their active involvement in the disturbance of public peace and public safety, unlawful blockade of Shehu Shagari Way for several hours. So there are several issues at hand. Disturbance of public peace and safety, unlawful blockage of Sherry Shagari Way, and forcefully hitting claims of forcefully hitting policemen to gain access. So what do we make of this? Now, the follow-up to that story is that, of course, they did not honor this invite from mm -hmm. the follow-up to this mm -hmm. story. But what do you make of this? Well, firstly, um, they have a right um, to assemble and, you know, and to gather together to express a public grievance on a public issue, you know. However, um, since the matter is in courts, right, they could, if they had done this before the courts, it was taken to court, it, was a, it could have been a different ball game. But some persons think they want to score a political point by doing that. But that does not reduce the fact that their rights exist to assemble. However, the Nigerian police, rather than focus on such minor issues because when you major in minor you become a major minor your major the major here is securing the lives and property of nigerians and also the what the nigerian police it needs to even look inwards and start seeing itself as what are those things that we need to start pushing for to make our own lives better to make the life of nigerian better rather than becoming a stoogy for political office holder at every you know, um, 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 presidency that comes into office. We need to find a way to restructure the laws to ensure that local policing, community policing, state policing becomes the order of the day rather than this federal government almighty approach towards policing. And that is, those are the flickers of evidences that this method of policing will not work for us because it keeps politicizing the police force, and rather, the police force should rather be a professional body based on the principles of salus populi et suprema lex, which is that the welfare of the people being the supreme law of the police force. And you know, so I think the police force needs to look beyond this political, becoming a political tool, an instrument um, in the hands of political office holders. Is it not a little too late? Too late. A little. Too, too, for what? You know, you're saying they should look beyond becoming instruments. We have, that is not to say that there aren't good police, policemen, but there are people, the, the large number of them, we know that a lot of them are involved in politics one way or the other. Is it, is it really possible for them to be totally, you know, um, independent of politics? Yes, it like? is. It is. It is. You know, institutions are built firstly through laws. So, firstly, we need to look at the laws governing the operation of the police force. How the head of the police force is appointed. I would rather prefer an appointment of the police force that is based on the judiciary, independent of political office holders. So we can make a twist to that, right? And so we also have to look at what is the institutional training of the police force. So far, so good. We're not investing so much in our police force as much as we should. The police force should be one of the most attractive professions in Nigeria, alongside being a teacher. But if you go to kids now in secondary school, how many people want to be doctors? How many people want to be lawyers like you? You see everybody raise up their hands. Pilots, even musicians these days, or like in the 1960s, you see kids raise up their hands. But how many people want to be police or teacher? 
And so you need to, we need to look at investing in the security apparatus in the police force of this country and taking it institutionally out of the hand of the executive and ensuring that there's check and balance by bringing in an institution as the judiciary into the whole process of the recruitment and all the process of appointment of police officers. All right, now you're a lawyer. Let's delve a little bit into the legal yes. angle to this. Now, we had the ANOBA Association Conference happen recently, and of course, President Muhammad Buhari gave the opening speech, and he gave the speech that caused a bit of controversy where he was talking about the fact that where an individual's right is, um, would cause some sort of, um, would jeopardize national interest, the individual's right to come second place and the person's right to be suspended, something in the line, light of that or in the line of that. And a lot of people attacked him. So I want to ask you, looking at Nigeria as we are today, we're, we're about 58 years old now, would you say that supremacy of law, rights, um, fundamental human rights or the fundamental rights of an individual, would you say that they are being enforced as they were created to be. Now, we know that the rule of law as propounded by Avi Dice is stated the supremacy of the law over the rulers and the ruled. Would you say that that is, applica is in application right now in Nigeria today? Firstly, I must say that, you know, interestingly, the rule of law itself is a byproduct of the social contract theory, which is that the government is the employee and the people are the employer. And so the government answers to the people and nobody's above the law, right? And so if you look at it, evidence is the end of argument. With Nigeria, nothing like that. Is it the rule of law that because you look young, you're wearing a jean, some persons in the name of being security agents would molest and attack you, and then you cannot do anything? Is that the rule of law? Is it the rule of law that people assemble together to protest their public right without damaging properties or maiming lives, and they say they cannot protest. Is it the rule of law? The way things are going in this country, the rule of law has been put in the back burner. And then we need to go beyond just touting certain foreign concepts. What is the Nigerian government doing to invest in the rule of law? I think that if the government is serious about the rule of law, we should start teaching the rule of law from primary school. What is the investment in civic education? What is the investment in public education in terms of the constitution? Some people even brought up matters of the Dasuki Gate and um, the man who was, you know, there are several people that have been held, withheld against court orders. Against the and rule of law. Ba it basically comes back to the question, what really is rule of law? Yes. And who, who binds you? If the law, if the court gives an order and you don't follow the order of the court, then at the end of the day, who really are you answering? That's to? true, that's true. And you see, one thing is that uh, we need to be very careful about this issue of national security. Even national security is subsumed under the canopy. I don't want to use the umbrella so, so people don't start thinking <laughs> of a party. Under the canopy of the rule of law. And so the rule of law even guides that going forward. Because when you talk of national security, you're talking of the interest of the people of Nigeria. Nigeria is not the bricks and walls. Nigeria is the people. So what is the interest of the Nigerian people that we're trying to protect in course of national security? And even if you decide that a person is a threat to national security, shouldn't, shouldn't it be the court that would determine that a person is a threat to national exactly. security? I would, I would think. And sense. this conversation is something that we can't wrap up, but it's always a delight to have you, Timmy. Thank you for having Thank me. you so much for joining us. Thank to enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.